folks, please join me in welcoming Megha Gupta, Welcome. Director, Human Resources. Hello, everyone. Uh, and it's absolutely my pleasure to be part uh, of Speed Higher Talent Assessment Conclave. And absolutely, absolutely looking forward towards having a great, great interaction today. So thank you so much. Thanks, Megha. Abdul Nazar, Associate Director, Human Resources, Verizon. Hi, good afternoon, Hello. everyone. Uh, Excuse me. And uh, I think I'm, I'm immense pleasure to join this fantastic opportunity to have a conversation with all of you and uh, looking forward to hear from everyone. Thank you, Abdul. Jagatpal Singh, COO, Cybage. Hi, I'm Jagatpal Singh. Uh, Cyber Software is a software development company. And uh, my role as CEO is uh, related where all skill building and delivery is included, both. And I'm happy to be part of this because this is one challenge which, you know, I mean, IT has been there for quite some time, but this is yet to be addressed to its fullest glory. So it's still in fancy stage, I feel. Thanks, Jagat. Uh, Pallav Purkayastha, Head of Talent Acquisition India at Rockwell Automation. Hello, Sikriti. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me to the Tech Geek Talent Assessment Conclave 2022. Looking forward to have a great discussion. And uh, like Jagat was saying, right, uh, automation hiring need of the hour. So looking forward to discuss and get great inputs from all the leaders in the call. Thank you. So thank you to each one of you for uh, being here and, uh, you know, for adding such, you know, some insightful and uh, great elements to our conversation, which I'm looking forward to, of course. So we'll quickly begin with the questions uh, that I have uh, for you. So to start with, I would want to know, uh, you know, how do HR managers or tech managers in your organizations set up a, a format of, uh, you know, virtual evaluation or online evaluations uh, to start with? So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll begin with Abdul. Abdul, can we, you know, have some insights from you? Yeah, so you know, if you really see from uh, the traditional way of hiring and the modern days of hiring, we usually used to have people having in-person conversation, check their ability by asking questions. But now these days, and especially in the last two years, people really want to see how we can really uh, shorten the time of the hiring and also see that how we can really assess more accurate uh, than the we used to do. So I think... More and more, the hiring managers and recruiters are, are going towards the online assessment, which really helps them to assess uh, the candidate's capabilities more or skills more accurately. And you know, generally, these formats are covered coding or programming assessments or analytical or quantitative aptitude to check that how, how really and how these candidates are faring in these assessments. And also, it also gives them a comparison of the entire slate. You know, that I think that reduces the time and also also increase the opportunity to go and land on the right candidate. Thanks, Abdul. Megha? See, I think, uh, you know, you know, while we all talk about, you know, the old age and the new age, you know, I would just bring to the fact that, you know, for the entire HR industry and for the talent, the landscape has completely changed in the last two years. With this pandemic, imagine, you know, at least interview standpoint, uh, everybody was very first about in-person interview. I don't think so, you know, in a reality setting two years before, we ever, ever thought about, you know, not having an in-person interview, at least minimum one round before selecting a candidate. And that was a prerequisite. And today we are, after two years, we don't know where the talent is sitting. We don't care where talent would be based out of tomorrow. What we care about is this the right person for the right job uh, and is able to manage virtually. I think the entire landscape has changed for us. And therefore, you know, the question should be around, are we set up, you know, not just from our process of how we interview, but also around, do we have the right tools, technology, you know, that we are going to leverage to make that interview happen, right from not just leveraging your teams or Zoom to have the virtual meetings, but are you able to figure out the body language, those little nudges and the clues that give the fact that, oh, is this person really capable of doing a job? How does the person cope up with the pressure? And I think, you know, those cannot be just solved by Zoom or, you know, you know any other virtual platform, but a more detailed collaborative platform where you can assess the candidate more deeply. I think that's the need of an hour beyond just thinking about, uh, oh, we've just gone to virtual, let's use a Zoom, uh, let's use a team to make the interview happen. So I think there's a lot more, uh, you know, mechanics that needs to be figured out in the new model of hybrid slash 
slash, uh, you know, whatever ways that we have. But I think uh, this process needs to be reinvented right from the scratch and make the process much more detailed, I would say. So if I may ask, uh, so when you say that there has to be a lot of details added to these tools and technology, what are those details? Like, would you like to share a couple of them that this is what the requirement of the HR industry of the fraternity for, for, for all the people out there is or, uh, you know, they look at? Sure. So, so think about it, right? Uh, now, uh, if the organization, say, for example, earlier into a lot of setup would want to give, you know, assessments to the people. Now, how would you make those assessments very, very live, which A, can be virtually done, but at the same time, you know, uh, you know, the other side of the table, the talent is not misleading that assessment and, you know, just doing it at their own time, their wish, and maybe probably taking help from Google or somebody else. So you need to also create an environment, which is a simulated environment where you know that the person is taking that assessment A on their own. Second, does, you know, uh, is able to cope up with the assessment pressure and you're able to assess those. I think so that's definitely one that technology needs to solve. Uh, I think the second piece is, you know, when you virtually interact, you can't notice a body language of an individual. So how can you get more collaborative way of assessing a candidate where it does make you feel and like that you're meeting the entire candidate from top to down and is able to assess the body language, how is, you know, reacting to different set of questions or, you know, role plays or any other group settings that you want uh, an individual to assess to. The third that I would really say is, you know, the, you know, if you really think of it, right, uh, you know, if you come into a virtual setup where teams are going to be, you know, from tomorrow virtually sitting out of anywhere, how do you assess these people also to say, how do they behave into a virtual setup of 50 people or 50 member team into a virtual thing and, you know, yet able to manage the team effectively, both emotionally as well as obviously the fact that the work is to be done. And how well can you assess a candidate? Can you make a real simulation of how do they run meetings through a virtual platform again? Because these are not the skills which we told ever to the candidates as a prerequisite but i think if you're hiring a leadership or a middle management role where there's going to be a large team which is not going to be physically available i think these things need to be sorted out by technology where you can assess the candidates wonderful i think that really helps us also understand uh, what the industry requirements are in terms of uh, uh, you know the 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 technology part where we are trying to pitch in and try to enable people perform better and uh, you know hire the right candidates uh, for them so that helps Megha, thank you so much i will now move to jagat so see uh, mega has brought up a lot of points and uh, i would just add there few um, the one uh, this remote uh, interview that is one thing to solve and then speed is the another piece to solve both are little separate i mean you can do speed up things by doing a lot of parallelism so of course a lot of assessment for a tech or a role you can do parallel you can deploy uh, automation systems in terms of you know the video processing capabilities audio processing capabilities and you can look at that but i would look at that this remote hiring and especially if you are trying to do mass, and uh, as Megha said, you want to look at middle management or mid seniority hiring, that's going to be difficult. But if I if I see some solutions, I mean, metaverse, of course, is a buzzword today, but it is not as uh, far as what we may be thinking. I think probably a couple of years, and we would see virtual, uh, you know, people talking to uh, each other, maybe far, but uh, they will be in the same room virtually. So uh, there is a lot which will happen in this space, I believe, and this space is going to be disrupted. Sometimes you may think that the interview is an interview, assessment is an assessment, but it can actually take a lot of shapes. And I feel a lot of disruption is required and will happen. Just one piece also I'll pick up that, you know, remote offers a machine interaction because naturally you are through machine and machine can also measure a lot of things which you cannot do when you are sitting face to face. But one example I'll give you is that when a person is sitting in front of you, even person may be a little more nervous compared to when the person is sitting. So person could be on their, his own or her own a lot more. And then if you're looking at say programming sort of a thing, uh, technology sort of a thing, and you really give a problem to solve, then you can analyze a lot by how much time and where the person is spending and pausing and things like that, which is very difficult for an analysis if you're sitting face to face with someone. So I would just add that it's a complex place. 
but uh, as I said, I still believe it is in infancy. It is not matured. It is a long time before it will mature, but it is set for disruption for sure. Actually, and uh, it, it's time that uh, we are actually looking at uh, constant evolution of anything and everything that we're trying to work on. So with these, uh, you know, conversations, it, it is very helpful for us also to understand uh, uh, what what's in and what's out and what's trending and what's not. So thank you, Jagat, for that. Uh, Pallav? So uh, I think uh, what my panelist uh, peers have shared is very important. I want to take a step back, right? So with or without the pandemic, the role of assessments must be very important and strategic for business and HR, right? What the pandemic has actually done is accelerated the need to adopt hiring automation and uh, online methodologies and assessment, right? Since uh, uh, the people who are involved in hiring, so be it business, candidates, HR, most of them are operating remotely. Correct. So now there are many transformative technologies like AI, uh, backed in, uh, intelligence techniques, other uh, related techniques which predict your hiring decisions and the successes. Right. Now that is the what part of the question. Uh, once we have outlined that vision, the important thing is how we implement that strategy. Right. So that would be then again based on two pillars, the job that we are hiring for and how important critical it is for your organization and the medium. So uh, for the purpose of our discussion, we talked about I mean, uh, online assessments and online uh, evaluations. Now, if we can merge these two and uh, bring everybody on the same page, so be it candidates talking about how they misrepresent, right? Uh, talking about business who wants talent as of yesterday and the recruiters who manually have to sift through all the say 100 or 200 profiles of Java developers which are coming their day, uh, coming their way. So if we can merge these, the needs of the three and automate it, I think that would be a great success story. And I think the, what, has come from uh, the the discussion is quite imperative and important for the success. Thank you, Palav. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, with these insights shared, I will uh, move to the next uh, set of things that I would want to know from you. So I'll uh, I'll go back to Abdul. Uh, Abdul, I would want to know from you that how do you ensure that you you reduce the turnaround time for your team and what do you actually consider a healthy path uh, to close positions in your organization or in industry perspective? You want to you know, talk about. Yeah, I think from a that is I think the most uh, frequent used word in in, in in with respect to hiring or recruiting employees, right? Uh, you know, people use this stat or SLA, you know, which is convenient for them. But from an experience perspective, turnaround time is one of the most important aspects that impact the overall hiring. You know, both from a candidate standpoint and from a hiring manager standpoint. Now, when you really want to look at that and how you really reduce that for the recruitment team or from the hiring manager standpoint, the first and foremost for me is that how you, do you have a standard hiring process in your organization? You know, or you, you just come up with each role to have a separate or you have a standard process in your organization that really provide the uh, clarity for both recruiters and hiring managers. And the second thing is, you know, most of the time, you know, we often hear that what you hear on the, what you see on the job spec and what you really want to hire are two different aspects. So how you really uh, have a very clear roles and responsibility laid down for the hiring managers and the candidates when they create the job rec or when they meet candidates is very important so that it really helps you, the recruiters to find the, the finest candidates for you. You know, the third thing, what, in, what, what I see is that, you know, if you, how you really most strategic in the hiring or in the ramp up plan, do you have a forecasting approach in your organization? Because this forecasting really helps the recruitment team to really see that what is going to come in their way and how they can really plan. And what are some of the things, what they need to really keep in mind where even from build their own team to whether they have to ramp up the recruitment team or they want to really leverage some of the technologies, what is available in the market, how we can really manage the, the future hiring is something which we can really keep in mind. Uh, you know, and also you see that most of the organizations are using technology and we are all want to be in the technology platform. How can we really automate our recruitment process also really reduce uh, some of the aspect what we want to look at and also it, it really cleans up the whole process. Uh, you know, something which you can also try is that how we can really do a gamification of the sourcing team because most of the recruitment team has a sourcing team separately, uh, interviewing team separately. How we can really gamificate, gamify some of the 
aspects of sourcing to really drive a source at on events with the talent acquisition team so that they can proactively look at or create pipeline that is uh, based on the pro- forecast what they have in the in in the in, in with them you know maybe one of the other aspects to for us to look into how we can really explore opportunity to see how can we make our employees as a brand ambassadors to scout talent right that's also reduce the sourcing time for us but these are some of the aspects it's really see that to streamline the process you have a set process so that everybody have a trust and uh, you know clarity on what we really want to do but if you really look at from a you know healthy that and again the that is depends on the team to team and organization to organization and how we really want to do it because this has an impact on the business and also impact on the candidate experience because you cannot interview a candidate and make an offer after 60 days and you don't know what kind of experience you are going to provide for the candidate so the tat definitely has a lot of external factors influence how we really want to do it but to really nurture a healthy sla for an organization i think it's important to establish or imperative to establish a standard hiring process first and foremost and also it may be good to explore that you know if you have an agreed timelines between each of your internal steps between the recruiter and hiring managers that helps reduce the ambiguity across the process and also build the trust between these two partners the third thing is if you can leverage technology uh, you know today as we speak that we speak that we use technology to assess people on the technology uh, aspect or the coding or an analytical space how can you bring that so that it can reduce the time what you really want to you know screen the candidate so i think these are some of the thing i don't want to really go back an exact number because the number is not going to depend because there are a lot of other aspects is built into it but if you can really have these things in place to an extent i think you can really reduce the tat and also your candidate and the hiring manager would be very happy and the experience that they go through the overall hiring process i was said uh, abdul and i think uh, you know the kind of engagement we bring out in the market to actually evaluate or hire any candidate that creates an impact of the organization of the kind of things uh, they are asking the kind of engagement the kind of questions that that they, they are you know trying to put out uh, that that is something that is being benchmarked by the candidates outside uh, in the market and uh, that is in where they evaluate you that what all roles or how much growth or uh, you know what are the kind of responsibilities or roles they would be uh, you know actually given so i think that that completely makes sense to have various uh, formats set in for uh, different roles i will now move to palav uh, palav uh, so abdul helped us uh, understand about the turnaround time uh, around the issue can follow and the various formats that we can look at i want to know you uh, from you about the the entire uh, return on investment so are you getting the right roi uh, from the method of format you are currently using and what are the con- you know methods or factors that you will give consider while calculating your recruitment yield or roi as sir sukriti so uh, allow me to give an example right and uh, then extrapolate it for the answer that we are discussing here so for example uh, say we are hiring 100 graduate engineering students right from campus so to hire 100 people we are potentially looking at a candidate pool of around 1000 to 2000 students now it's not humanly possible to meet every student so we have mechanisms in place to filter in the students that we actually want to meet invite them and meet them through the interview stages and for that we have to have in place in house as well as external test in source through partners to evaluate these students right so i'm i'm giving you a very high level generic example now how do we decide that okay what are those uh, basic uh, uh, jobs right so the, the job that we are hiring for and the medium that we are using like i was sharing so we look at the job and the role that we want to hire and based on which we decide the parameters of evaluation and the technology the relevant technology that we need now it must be automated at every stage right through the application through the final round of discussion so they could be your google forms online polls for inviting applications it could be online interviews it could be online quizzes uh, online simulations gamification coding you name it right and for it to be successful the following points are very important first of all you need to test so validate the content of the test that you have created and the relevant it software support that is required and 
create a proper test structure so now because we are automated so how it is ease of i mean how it manages ease of use for business for candidates and for hr so it could be an audio session it could be a video session it could be a language session right so how it is how the test has been properly uh, uh created for the ease of use and then clearly defining the system and it requirements so now i think most of us here are in delhi bangalore pune bombay right uh the candidates that we hire could be situated in bhagalpur in bihar or rajamundri in andhra where the internet connection i mean i'm using a very basic very crude example but that's the reality of life that we face right so clearly defining the it systems and uh, uh, the requirements that we have so hey uh, we invite you for the interview please ensure that you have the proper mechanism in place to attend the uh, interview now from an rn roi point of view we look at very uh, to start off with i'll name few basic factors that we look at so the uh, leads to hire ratio right so applications invited to interviews in actually interviewed offered and then new hires we also look at the quality of hire now uh, that's the need of the uh, uh, time so quality of hire turnaround time abdul was talking about the turnaround time so it's not just about from the time the requisition came to the recruiter to the time we offered and the candidate onboarded it also the time spent uh, to manually screen the cv mm. versus automated filtering right so that is also that also brings down your turnaround time uh, then we also look mm. at cost per hire source mix uh, uh, what we call in rockwell dei diversity equity and inclusion we also look at various other parameters like ease of use for our customers or our stakeholders right so we have the hiring manager survey we have the new hire survey so even for our candidates who became employees we ask them how was your interview process was it good what can we uh, do to make it better so having these seven eight uh, parameters and roi Uh, structures in place helps us evaluate and over the last two years we have fine tuned it of course i mean these are the first few forays that we have made into automated hiring especially for an organization like us which is in industrial automation but over the last two years we have grown significantly in the it software digital space so the need of the hiring has change almost 180 degree and so while we also look have to look at the speed of hiring we are also looking at the quality of hiring.